Hi, I'm Felipe, and in this talk, I will present joint work with Alison Clark, Karen Jeffrey, and Ron Garcia. We'll begin by providing a five minute summary. Historically, languages were separated into statically and dynamically typed, each with their own costs and benefits. Dynamically typed languages provide rapid prototyping and flexible idioms at the cost of possible errors at runtime while statically typed languages provide guarantees before running a program at the cost of rigidity. Gradually typed languages have risen to bridge between these two as a third category, where the programmer can control whether required checks are static or delegated to runtime. These runtime checks come at a cost, but are needed to guarantee that all static invariants the type system relies upon hold in practice. Gradual languages that provide these guarantees are considered sound and we will only focus on sound gradual languages for our purposes. Since its original inception for simple types, multiple efforts to gradualize statically typed languages have come to fruition, requiring increasingly complex insights and justifications from designers. Abstracting gradual typing, or AGT for short, is a framework intended to reduce and focalize the dependency upon intuition in the design of a gradual language. Starting from a statically checked language that guarantees certain property, for example, type safety, and after a mechanical transformation of the type system rules to make all type constraints explicit, we apply designer intuition to define gradual types and their meaning, following a design process that uses ideas from abstract interpretation. All these parts act as input to the AGT framework to produce a gradual language. Appeals to intuition and design decisions are constrained to the definition of gradual types, as the framework itself provides a justification for all other operations and transformations required, which can be then performed mechanically. After being introduced in the context of records of typing, AGT has been successfully applied in multiple domains using the original methodology. In this paper, we revisit the first AGT development, identifying limitations of the original approach, and introduce further design guidelines for AGT, which provide extra properties not guaranteed by the original framework. We expect these guidelines to impact AGT developments moving forward. We identified two unintended consequences of the original design for gradual record subtyping using AGT. The first problem is limited enforcement of modular invariants. Consider the following program. By ascribing point to have a record type with only one field X of type int, we intend to hide any other fields, like Y, even when the field exists in the ascribed value. We would expect any chain of casts, including this one that obscures information by casting first to the unknown type, to produce an error and not allow the projection to proceed. Unfortunately, this is not the case for the original design, which instead exposes the field that was supposed to be hidden. The second problem involves memory consumption. Consider the following mutually recursive definition of predicates even and odd. In a properly tail recursive language, these recursive calls do not need to grow the stack. Thus, after some time, this program will produce its result using a constant amount of memory. We would expect this property of the static language to be preserved in its gradual counterpart, for example, if we did not know the return type of the even function. Unfortunately, this is not the case for the original design, as pending runtime checks accumulate on the stack until this program runs out of memory. Because memory consumption is linear on the stack size instead of constant, this problem was originally identified by Herman et al. in other gradual languages. The AGT framework produces a gradual language that is only as good as our proposed design for gradual types, as it is this design that guides the introduction of runtime checks. The two problems mentioned did slip through the cracks because the original design guidelines of the AGT framework are not restrictive enough to always avoid them. In this paper, we aim to produce reusable design guidelines so that these problems will not impact future AGT developments, and for that purpose, we have adapted the concept of forward completeness from abstract interpretation to the AGT framework. Forward completeness constrains the runtime checks arising from the definition of gradual types. The original definition of runtime checks for records of typing is not forward complete, but we replaced it with a novel definition, called bounded rows and records, which we proved to be forward complete. Our work also shows that by constraining our runtime checks to be forward complete, we can further limit our appeals to intuition and use the AGT framework to produce a gradual language that suffers none of the problems we have previously described, but is instead precise and space efficient. 
For the rest of our talk, we will dive into more details in five steps, beginning with a more detailed summary of the ABT framework through an example language. We already mentioned that ABT can be used to generate a gradual language based on these four inputs. First, a static language of interest. In our case, we consider the simply typed lambda calculus extended with booleans, integers, and record types. The type system includes a standard subtyping relation that accepts extra fields and rejects incompatible records. Second, we need the proof of type safety with subtyping. Third, we need to make sure the type system follows a particular structure. For example, consider this typing rule for projection that will need some changes. In a standard type system, we may match the type for the field directly from the premise. But in AGT, we must transform this rule into an equivalent one where the matching is encapsulated into a partial function, here named proj. This function achieves the same goal, but in this form, AGT can later reuse the function. Fourth and last, we introduce our design of gradual types and assign these gradual types meaning through a function from gradual types to sets of static types. In the abstract interpretation literature, this function is called a concretization function. This design step is flexible and depends upon the language designer's goals and intuitions. We always begin by accepting all the static types to also be gradual types, with their meaning assigned to each singleton set. In this design, we also want to accept programs without type annotations. This is normally achieved by introducing a special type annotation via the sugaring. This question mark represents the unknown type, which accounts for any possible static type. Because we intend to give programmers more flexibility, we want to accept types with partial information, so that we can assign a type to point that is more specific than unknown, even when static information is incomplete. In this case, we have no information about the type of Z, but we know that point must be a record with a single field X. To be able to express this type, we introduce gradual records. Gradual records map fields to gradual types, and their meaning is recursively determined. Because AGT enforces type restrictions globally, gradual records may still appear too restrictive in some programming situations. For example, this program produces an error, even though the access to field Y happened in a dynamically typed function. This may or may not be okay, depending on the situation, but so far in our design, it is always wrong. To make the type system more flexible, the gradual design introduces another type, where an extra marker means that more fields with unknown types might be present in the record. Garcia and others named this type a gradual row type. With these definitions of types, and especially the concretization function, AGT provides a mechanical process to derive a gradual language. For example, we can now mechanically derive a gradual typing rule for projection by introducing a gradual version of the proj function. This gradual version is mechanically specified by the framework as follows. Starting from a gradual type, we extract its meaning via the concretization function. On this set of static types, we apply pointwise the static proj function to each type, obtaining a new set of static types. We summarize the resulting set via a function from sets of static types to gradual types. The meaning of this gradual type must include all the static types in the original set. This function alpha is called an abstraction function in abstract interpretation. We will use yellow arrows wherever we refer to a concretization function, and cyan arrows wherever we refer to an abstraction function. A very similar process is followed for predicates. Consider this program, which takes a record named point and introduces two type upcast that hide all fields except field Y. Type checking this program relies on the typing rule for ascriptions and on transitivity of subtyping. We can also mechanically generate a gradual typing rule for these expressions by mechanically generating a gradual version of the subtyping predicate. This gradual predicate holds if at least one instance of the static predicate holds between types in the meaning of each gradual type. 
These gradual predicates are by design not always transitive, because the witnesses at each step might not be related. Here, for example, S1 and S2 are connected by one type, just like S2 and S3 are. But since the types at S2 are different, if we consider S1 and S2 directly, we find no types that connect via subtyping. The language runtime must keep track of these predicates in order to guarantee that all transitivity assumptions used in the type preservation proof do actually hold after reduction. For this purpose, AGT introduces evidence objects, which are tracked at runtime wherever preservation may appeal to transitivity. The meaning of these evidence objects will contain a subset of the subtyping judgments of the original gradual predicate. Only those that have been transitively preserved through reduction. AGT introduces a partial function among evidence objects called consistent transitivity. Consistent transitivity collects the transitive witnesses at the meaning level. Let's see an example of its computation. We begin by expanding the meanings of evidence objects and then we filter the set of pairs with equal types in the middle. In this case, there is just one. This new set contains all the pairs where transitivity can be applied, and we call the operation to obtain this set relational composition. Then we can apply an abstraction partial function to produce a new evidence object. This object is the result of consistent transitivity. The meaning of this new object will contain all the subtyping judgments in the relational composition. However, the abstraction function may introduce noise, and as we mentioned before, this is a problem. To see how, let's revisit an example we previously presented. We wanted this program to stop with an error, but mentioned that it instead runs to completion. Why is that? This program involves three evidence objects, which must account for the three casts in the program. First, the lead binding is hiding the Y field of the record value. Then. This ascription hides all type information. And finally, the outer ascription exposes a record with a Y field from a term with the unknown type. At runtime, we will keep track of these evidence objects in the program instead of casts. Let's now explore the subtyping judgments that must be included in each of these evidence objects. The first object can only contain a single static subtyping judgment. For the second one, because the type on the right is unknown, the meaning can contain all subtyping derivations with the record of field X at type int on the left. There are only two. For the third one, because the type on the left is unknown, the meaning contains all subtyping derivations with the record of field Y at type int on the right. Problems arise when we apply consistent transitivity. In the original AGT paper, each of these evidences is represented as a pair of gradual types, and their meaning with respect to subtyping is assigned by collecting all subtyping judgments that hold between types in the meanings of the gradual type on each side. To compute consistent transitivity on these two evidence objects, we filter relational composition and keep just two subtyping judgments. But when we perform abstraction, the best type we can obtain on the right is a gradual row. This is a problem because expanding its meaning introduces extra subtyping judgments. These extra judgments are spurious for our purposes. And applying consistent transitivity with the third evidence object now has undesired transitive paths, making consistent transitivity succeed instead of failing. To solve this problem, we propose forward completeness as a design criteria for AGT. Without restrictions, computing consistent transitivity can introduce noise, as the filtered set may contain less elements than the meaning of the corresponding evidence object. In this paper, we propose introducing a new abstraction for evidence objects, restricting all runtime operations to be forward complete, that is, the result of consistent transitivity must introduce no noise in its meaning outside of relational composition. The sets must stay the same after a round trip.
when we prove that all runtime operations are forward complete, we outlaw introducing noise, and in this way, we produce a precise gradual language. Most operations in the original record subtyping development were forward complete, except for consistent transitivity. Thus, our goal is to provide a more precise definition of evidence objects, which does guarantee forward completeness everywhere. We can now introduce bounded rows and records, or BRR for short, as an evidence abstraction to achieve this goal. As we previously mentioned, the original evidence abstraction for records of typing introduces noise pairs. This extra noise lets consistent transitivity succeed instead of failing. Our goal is to make sure that consistent transitivity never introduces noise, but that it can still account for constraints over fields that may or may not appear in a record of type. As a first step, we introduce an extra annotation for each field distinguishing between fields that always occur as required and those that only appear in some types as optional. This addition fixes the particular example we already presented, but it is insufficient in general, as rows can still introduce noise. Consider this example, where we have an evidence object where field x is optional at type int, and another object where field x is optional at type bool. From relational composition, we get a set where the field x is absent in all records. But when we look at the meaning of this evidence object after a round trip, we recover the field x with no type restrictions. To account for this limitation, we introduce a third annotation, signaling when a field must be always absent. These extra annotations are the core intuition of bounded rows and records, and more details can be found in the paper. Now that we have a forward complete abstraction, let's revisit our second problem. We expected this program to run to completion, but instead it runs out of memory. Why is that? Every recursive call in this program is wrapped by an evidence object for a runtime check, and at each recursive call, this must be composed by consistent transitivity. The standard semantics of AGT composes consistent transitivity checks after internal reduction. So they accumulate first waiting on the stack, and then we perform all checks once the check term has reduced to a value. This strategy imposes a linear space overhead accumulating on the call stack. To avoid this overhead, instead of composing checks inside out, our design composes evidence objects as soon as we can a strategy that only accumulates a constant overhead throughout reduction. In general, this transformation requires consistent transitivity to be associative. Associativity guarantees that no matter the order in which we perform the checks, the final result is the same. While the original design was not associative, we prove that whenever consistent transitivity is forward complete, then it must be associative as well. Since we have already shown bounded rows and records to be forward complete, we can update our evaluation strategy and preserve observational equivalence. Associativity alone is not enough, as one may just be transferring the space consumption out of the stack and into the evidence objects themselves. To guarantee that our new strategy does not introduce hidden costs, we also need to prove that consistent transitivity has a size bound. We also prove this property for the bounded rows and records abstraction, thus providing a space-efficient language. As we have shown, while forward completeness constrains the gradual design space, it has desirable properties. When all runtime operations are forward complete, the AGT framework mechanically produces a gradual language that is both precise and space-efficient. Thank you.